So I know you quickly included funding for an MMIR office after the task force recommendations came out along with other healing oriented items in the public safety budget. Um, this was based on listening sessions prior to the George Floyd murder and uprisings. My question is what is it about trauma informed healing that you think Minnesota needs to get right with this budget? Well, thanks Mickey and, and thanks for, um, for being in a space to ask that question and it's appropriate as we're watching the world watch us as we will see if justice is served and uh, around the death of George Floyd. And um, we understand, and I just want to name this to everyone, the trauma that was inflicted by George Floyd's murder is building on basically centuries of trauma that's been inflicted on BIPOC communities. With that being said, um, our response as it stands now in terms of um, providing security for folks to be able to uh, express their views I understand and Lieutenant Governor understands um, physical security is not what the only thing communities need. They need that sense of that they're part of that community. And I understand very clearly when more National Guard troops show up in a space that can add to that trauma, um, even though they're there to provide that safety. And so we think this gives us an opportunity. I said it at the end of May and I'll continue to say it. Minnesota needs to get this right around systemic racism and historical trauma now because we're not going to get another shot out of it if we don't. And so I think the budgeting items we put in there, the expectations that we want to see, um, not just police training around these issues, but in community and having communities leaders driving this conversation. I think one of the, critique, the critiques that are fair right now is as we prepared for the George Floyd, you know, George Floyd's justice coming with the Chauvin trial, was there enough outreach to start preparing people for the trauma they feel? Last week, I watched this in front of my home when people came here. Um, they needed a space to grieve. And I'm not certain that we are yet um, have a systematic way of providing that. So we're definitely concerned about this. We are reaching out to folks and researchers in the communities to help us understand this. Um, maybe Lieutenant Governor, we were on several weeks ago, can, can talk about some of the folks we're reaching out to, to help us understand. And again, the state's not gonna do this. The state needs to be a partner in that making this happen. Um, but I am deeply concerned. I'm deeply concerned about, about trauma-informed uh, teaching. Um, every one of our students is gonna come back with, with some level of trauma score um, to school. Many are going to be uh, in need of mental health services. Of, of, of all those other supports. And we wanna make sure, and one of the things we're pushing our summer programming that I went out yesterday and asked the legislature to pass is heavily based on this very, this very need you're talking about. So Lieutenant Governor, any additions? So Nikki, thank you for your question. Um, uh, and thank you for uh, always telling stories that frankly um, don't, uh, that, that not a lot of other folks are telling. Um, and I actually think this is one of those stories. Um, uh, missing and murdered indigenous women and girls in a two-spirit community um, has been an issue, um, you know, that is uh, finally, uh, we are now moving towards solutions for um, a very long time. Um, we had to put our trauma on display in order for people to believe what was happening. And I say we, because I'm a, a survivor and child witness and now feel like we are in a space where I can also share those stories because of the work that um, many women uh, have done uh, to lead us to this, this moment. So the missing and murdered indigenous uh, women and girls um, and two spirit uh, work that we did with the task force, that first recommendation, as you mentioned, was to open this office. <clears throat> and part of that is an acknowledgement of the trauma, that this is ongoing. It's not um, something that I think people wish they could just throw some money at and then it's done. We need to be asking the questions, why is this happening in the first place? Why do some folks see our women as less valuable? Um, and I oftentimes talk about how at best we are invisible and at worst we are disposable. And that is what the trauma is really about. So 
Um, I think a big piece of this is listening to survivors and that's how we've tried to put um, our, our budget together and respond. Um, but also know that, uh, you know, building these relationships, allowing uh, survivors to speak on their own behalf uh, is one of the ways that um, we address this, this trauma. And then it's not just about meeting some physical need for folks, it is also about meeting um, a spiritual uh, and, and mental health need as well. Um, and this work is ongoing and uh, I'm grateful that we are now in a place where we're moving on it. The one thing that I wanna say too is that we um, are working with Dr. Joy Lewis and Dr. Brittany Lewis um, on the community on community healing. And they have been our partners in this work. Um, it's you know not revolutionary in that you know it is work that's bringing the community to together to be heard so that policymakers can hear uh, and understand the trauma that their communities are experiencing, but also um, ensure that uh, we're taking action based on the recommendations. So this is a series um, of conversations that we've been having with folks, and um, you know our goal is to see that translated uh, into um, into policy. But uh, you know, the state of Minnesota, we talk about this a lot, has been headed in the same direction for 162 years. And so trying to turn the ship is, um, is a tall order. But I think uh, we are in a moment, as the governor said, where we simply have to, to get it done. And um, if folks aren't willing to, to be in that work with us, then they need to just get out of the way. <laughs>